We have a good group. Hello, we're live. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. yeah. You ready to talk about? I press? am so ready. I am. Are we just... talking about Ferris too? Right. Yeah. I hope so because I hope so too. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting. I'm getting all my books out. That was uh, some good stuff. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about these. I'm. I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be fun, and it's been. Nice building up to winter. I'm getting really excited about winter now. Yeah. And it's such a thick book that I'm like, okay, I think we're going to get like everything we want from it too. I hope so. I hope so. Oh my God. But you haven't read winter yet, right? Right. Right. So that's exciting. This is, this is a chunk or two and I haven't, I haven't started. So there's that, but yeah. Hey, hey Kim. Kim. Hello, it's my mom. Hi, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. Mom's already started winter, actually, so she's doing the first round of that one. I'm gonna have to get going on it soon because that one will probably take longer to read. It's pretty thick. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to just maybe section Hi, it, Paige. section it off. Hi, Paige. In our, you know, five chapter segments. Is that how you have the chat set up? No, I did it as 10 chapter segments oh, because there's so, because there's 97 chapters if we did. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess I could have done five at a time, but it was just, no, that'll work. I was lazy. <laughs> hey, Jane. It's okay. Welcome. Okay. Yeah. First 40, 40 chapters of Wednesday. Good night. That's awesome. Paige says, I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> Still head to home. <laughs> We said, hey, Paige. Can you lip read? <laughs> Hi. Hey, Amber, how you doing? Hi, Amy. Yeah. Great name. Amy, the every time I see your here. name, I'm like, what a great name. She does have a great name. <laughs> I'm up to the same, same. place. Oh, man. Oh, you are. Okay, because I know you were having a hard time starting, Paige. I thought Paige had been a reading machine lately, like, because she wasn't feeling good. How are you feeling, Paige? Oops. I'm going to start either. I can't wait to pick it up. Oh, tomorrow. Good job, Kim. Yeah, Good I was job. for tomorrow, too. Hi, Paige. Uh, I think you'll need what? I'm confused. We need clarification, is, please. I know. I, my brain moved on. <laughs> <laughs> I should click on the moment so I can actually see them. Uh -huh. <laughs> see. Hi, Nicole. Welcome. <sighs> oh, exciting. Exciting. I'm really, really excited about this. Um, did, you, did you love, did you love Cress? I, I really liked Cress, but Cress is my lowest rated so far I of all. I believe of that. I know. And I felt bad too, because I'm like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> Danielle is, <laughs> is Cress. It's my little spirit animal. I swear. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's our, it's our little Danielle. But um, it felt like, well, so I really, really enjoyed it. But it felt like a middle novel to me. Like this one actually, like Scarlet didn't feel like a middle novel. That one felt like almost like a standalone in a sense. But this one felt like you're we're preparing for the end in a sense. And I liked it a lot. And there were some scenes in this that were so good that I cried. And there were some scenes in this that were just so emotionally impactful that I was like, yes. But it was a pretty big book, and there was a lot of, of like, preparing for the finale in this for me. Yeah. But what do you think? No, I I loved it. I I just loved I loved Cress and Thorn. I loved their relationship. I loved, you know, just. I I don't know. I just loved all of it. I was sad when Dr. Erland died, oh. and. Yeah, that was really yeah, sad. That that broke my heart. I'm like, man, and not to skip ahead, but like, I don't know how I'm gonna read any of them like in the same light after having read Ferris now. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, <clears throat> Chris was good. I I I, I mean, it, I feel like I almost need a refresher right now. But you know, it was. It was good, the whole surviving the desert thing and coming upon the gypsy. Well, first they survived the crash, then they 
survive the desert. I loved all of Thorne's like survival skills and <laughs> and then that he lost his eyesight. Like I just felt like that really was maybe humbling for him. Like as humble yeah. as Thorne can get. And yeah. I don't know. I liked I liked that side of him. I liked how patient Cress was with him. Yeah, and it was nice to see how, you know, Cress had idolized him in so many ways, but she still she still likes who he is, you know? Like, even though you're kind of worried, like, when you idolize somebody that much, are you still going to feel the same way about him? And granted, he wasn't that hero. He, you know, he doesn't think he's that hero, but in other ways, he's still a good person. And I think that she's uncovering that a lot through this book. Oh, yeah, she nice. was trying so hard to prove that he was... And he was trying he's so really hard to prove her wrong. And he's like, no, I'm not. I had such selfish motives all along. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And maybe that's true, but he still does the right thing in the end. You know, at least he is now. So, yeah. I loved yeah. that, um, that Aiko, you know, got a body for a second. And yeah. I mean, she still has time. a body, but it has to get repaired, get totally fixed. And, I actually loved Aiko in that body too. Like I felt so good for her because she's such a confident, you know, confident Android anyways. And I'm like, it's good to see her paired with a body that makes her feel amazing, you know, and she just yeah. can be herself. And, and, you know, she wasn't that happy being the ship. So. <laughs> oh no, she was not. And like speaking of the, the escort droid and like, you know, um, Cress getting so jealous and stuff. Oh, like, all that was so that good. Whole scene. <laughs> that whole scene. I knew, oh I my knew God. he was going down there to gamble. I don't know if I, like, remembered that, you know, from when I read it before, or if I just, you know, Thorn is just that predictable. <laughs> but... I was definitely a little pissed at him at first. I was like, okay, now I'm sure there's a, there's a good excuse for this, but at the same time, I didn't think about him wanting to use that, uh, that android's body for Ico. I just was like, what exactly is he doing? Or is he just being stupid because he doesn't, you know, he wants to prove that he is a jerk, you know? And so I was like, don't be stupid, Thor. <laughs> See you, everybody. Third Jane. Oh, it's a reread. Oh, did you love it, Jane? Don't don't spoil anything. <laughs> don't tell us. <laughs> hey, Stacy. Over halfway through winter. That's fantastic. Everybody That's awesome. is kicking butt. Page is still crappy. Day off waiting for COVID. Oh, so you think it might be COVID or just, but just the throat infection. Picking up like two hours later and just, yeah, it sounds like it was, oh, she's talking about picking up winter and blasting yeah. through it. Yeah. So it's probably, you know, like all the books, it's probably a really quick read. We'll be fine. I don't think you'll need the sections when you begin reading winter. Oh, oh okay. Wow. Like we'll just fly through it. Like we won't even want to stop at chapter 10. <laughs> <laughs> I got a comment. I got a comment. <laughs> hey, Melanie. Chris is my favorite of all the books. Yeah, you know, and I know that's true. I know that's true for some people, and then I've heard the opposite for other people. So, yeah, it's just, you know, how books are. <laughs> I did really like it, though. Don't get me wrong. It was just of the ones we've read so far, it wasn't my favorite of the ones we read, but I still really, really enjoyed it. There wasn't enough and tie in it for Amy. <laughs> You got me. <laughs> you got me, Danielle. <laughs> I know. I yeah, know. actually, we did get a bit of Kai in this one, more than in Scarlet. That yeah. was nice. Yeah. Um, the, there was, like, the the motherly moment that um, the little wedding planner lady had with him. That was kind of yeah, nice. I, I liked that. that. Yeah. 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 My, my, my uh, Lunar, and, lunar and Chronicles we, boyfriend. And we love that Kai knows now. And I he know. Knows, he knows that Cinder is Celine and he just didn't want to be lied to. It's understandable. Who does? Nobody does. <laughs> Cause you want to breeze right through yeah, it all. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I believe it. Oh, great. thanks Jane. I hope I don't remember what you agree with me because <laughs> I've been slow to go through these. <laughs> the thorn book is your lowest. Oh, she's saying that about me. Yeah. Sorry, Kim. <laughs> but I like Thorn. I still love Thorn, and I still liked Cress a lot. Don't get me wrong; I still really liked it. It reads quickly. Okay, so we're gonna winter. We're just gonna go fly through. 
Oh, mom wasn't having feelings for Chris. Sorry, Danielle. It's okay. I won't take it personally. <laughs> she loves you, though. She adores you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a lot of setup in this book for the finale. Yeah, and it was. And that was nice because, it, you know, we needed Cress to be able to move on to the final book. There was so much that happened in Cress. There was so much that we learned in Cress as well, which I really I enjoyed. And then, of course, then there was closing of some chapters like Dr. Erland. But then there's opening of new chapters. And I really am excited to get to know Winter better, especially after reading Ferris. So I'm like, yeah. That's going to be an interesting new addition to the character group. When I was reading Ferris, I, I mean, did, did you guys put that together that winter was going to be, um, Ev, is it Everett? Yeah. Everett's daughter. I, I did. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But so, so did you, did you put it together pretty early on or what? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think, I think that Chris sets us up well for that because if we know that Lavana is is Winter's stepmother, then I was trying to think what are the possibilities here? What are the possibilities here? And we know she's in love with Everett. And then well, we'll get into Ferris. <laughs> we'll get I into Ferris. I'm, I'm itching. <laughs> Stacy enjoyed Chris more than Scarlet. Yeah. Um, it. The, the funny thing about both those books, Scarlet and Cress, is like they have completely different vibes. Both of those books have really, really different vibes. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting that um, that Marissa Meyer did that, where she has these books within a series, but then she kind of just changes the style up quite a bit. And that's pretty fun. That was pretty cool. Wolf had a really hard time in Cress. Like, Wolf oh. was not his best self. And I get it, like, because Scarlet got kidnapped and... He just, you know, he's been on Luna, so he knows the kind of torture that she is probably facing. And I know he just really thought there was no hope, but man, he goes from his moods like, yeah, he's I know, volatile. He, man. He, he was very volatile, and I felt bad for Paige because I know that she loved Wolf and and like you yeah, don't get much, you don't get a, you get a very sad side of Wolf in in Cress. Um, yeah. and yeah, you're right. His, his moods are very I, volatile, but that has a lot to do with how they've manipulated his genes, you know? Yeah. It's I thought tough. it was weird that Cress was so afraid of him. I was like, I, I didn't think it was that strange because for one, she'd done all this research on, well, the, yeah. and then two, Cress was afraid of all of them, especially when she really you know, like was confronted with all of them because she had never been around people at all. So her social skills were needed to be developed is, is what they needed to be. And so yeah. she was struggling a lot and her fear was overriding all that because I don't, I just think that she was isolated so much that she just didn't, she never had a chance to be around anybody except, what, what's the name, Mira? Yeah, Sybil Mira. Sybil Mira, that's it. <clears throat> But yeah, she she was extra scared of of Wolf, and Wolf was just broken. It was sad. Thorn's Melanie's favorite. Yeah, he's a fantastic character. I love Thorn too. Don't get me wrong. He's hilarious. He's very cocky and fun. He's so fun. Yeah, I liked how they all met up, and it it was it was. I kind of expected it. I didn't expect it. I was wondering at first, like, how are they going to get back together? But then when the um, when the the satellite started falling and they were kind of trying to figure out where it was falling, and when it did fall, he's like, well, we're in the desert. It yeah. could be Sahara. And I was like, oh, that's how they're going to get back together. Yeah, I was like, this is too perfect. It was like, uh, this is too convenient, you know. There was it, it that. It was pretty but, convenient. Yeah. yeah. I didn't mind too much, though. I mean, it was too either. convenient, but... Um, I didn't either, because they had to go through, you know, hell to get to where Cinder was. Well, and what did you think of those awful people that they, they met up with that were protecting them and then tried to sell uh, Crest to Dr. Erland? Yeah. Horrible. Well, that, you know, and that would make... Cress even more weary of trusting people because she trusted yeah. that lady and she trusted those guys and they completely sold them out. So 
I, I can see why Cress struggles with social interactions because <laughs> it's hard for her, poor thing. So I'm guessing the Luna peeps are now susceptible to the plague. Yeah. Yeah, because so they mutated. So I'm curious about that. Wouldn't that put Cress into harm because she's been around Dr. Erland? Yeah. I mean, they're all vulnerable as far as I can tell. Yeah, it seems I, I didn't. He just got it so quickly. And I know that it mutated. They know that this new mutation causes you to get sick quickly. But then I'm like, well, where did he get it? Because he's been around all of them. Or at least he's been around Cinder and he's been around um, the did, other thumb. Did somebody in the village have it? Jason. Yeah, but wouldn't then Cinder and Jason be in trouble of getting sick because they've been with Dr. Erland, or at least around Dr. Erland for a while now. Same with Wolf. He's he's threatened to be sick. They've all been around Dr. Erland this whole time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how, you know, the virus picks its yeah. <laughs> host. It's, it's prey. Yeah. <laughs> the light's not being honest. Same prey screaming. I didn't remember it was coming while I read it. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, it was horrible. That was horrible. And so Here. at this point, at the end of Crest, he still can't see, but he started doing the eye drops that are supposed to, that Dr. Erland made out of his bone marrow or something like that. Yeah, so he's going to lose some of that humble and humble. I don't know what he meant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and I'm curious to see, like, Thorne actually, like, get to see Cress again. Like, I think that'll be yeah. pretty neat. I'm excited. I, I'm really excited. I'm just, I'm ready. Yeah, he got a new body for Ico even, even thinking about, without even thinking about it. Yeah, he, he definitely... I guess I'm behind on the comments. <laughs> he definitely um, was thinking about Iko. It shows that he, he's a very caring person. Yeah. I love that Thorn got droid for Iko. <laughs> Paige was about to slap him into another planet. Yeah, I felt the same way, Paige. <laughs> I didn't think Thorn was a good ex had a good excuse at first either. It was super irritated by him at that point. Yeah, I was too. I was like... Even if he was trying to make a point, this was not a time to make a point. I was I was not happy with that. <laughs> yes, you'll flash through. I read the first 40 chapters before commenting on Discord. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. That's hey, really show. good news. Scarlet Hi. was my favorite too so far, show. Well, that and Fairest. Fairest. So good. We can always just skip lady. ahead and come back. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who's the wedding lady? Was so beautiful. Yeah. Um, that um, wedding lady was so beautiful. Who was the wedding lady? Was her name? Oh, like Priya oh, yes, or? yes, 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 yes. For Kai's wedding. With, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but she, was. she had like the sari on, and mm -hmm. and know, she just was a wonderful personality, and she yeah. was making Kai feel amazing. Yeah. When he was feeling so low, my poor Kai. Kai scene. Yes. Me too, Kim. I love that bit too. I, I loved it when, uh, speaking of the scene at the end, when Kai was like, we, you know, we don't need a princess. We need a revolutionary. And she's like, oh, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> See, he awesome. knows her so well. He knows her so well. And it's, it's true. And yeah, no, he's, he's wonderful. Kai's just hey, wonderful. Jane. <laughs> hey Jane. Yeah. She finally got Scarlet in. So I'm glad Good. to hear that because she had all the other ones, but Scarlet was the one that was on hold still. I thought Wolf went a little silly. He wasn't even thinking there was a chance Scarlet. I know he yeah. really did like go to the extreme. Like there was no way to save Scarlet. Poor yeah. Guy. Of course I did because he just wasn't himself. Yeah, she did him dirty. You're right. I'm sorry, Paige. I did. I did think about you during reading while reading Crest. I was like, oh, poor Paige. <laughs> <laughs> so far. Oh, fair. Oh, you gave it. Did you give it five stars, Kim? I can't remember if you did. Fave, fave so far. Scarlet Crest. I think I enjoyed the same and Cinder a little less. I, yeah, Scarlet's still my favorite. But um, 
I like Cinder for what it did. It started the whole story out. It gets you to know the characters. Like, it's a good yeah. beginning story, I think. Too convenient to land in the Sahara. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. And that was rough because I wanted him to tell Cress right away. And yeah. I know why well, he didn't. And like they said, I don't remember who said it, but they said, you know, he probably thought he had more time. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and that was a bummer because, you know, I know he was also waiting because he didn't want to scare her off because she was already so freaked out and pissed off at him anyways. So she was waiting yeah. for the right time, but the right time didn't come because, because our poor Dr. Erlen died. Yeah. Convenient. It was. <laughs> What did he get from the boy in the village? Oh. What? The um the mutated let him Oh yeah. I know, but I just I, I still feel like he was still around Wolf, like taking care of Wolf. He was still around Cinder, he was still around Jason. Yeah. Jason. Jason, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Jason. I looked it up. Okay. It is said just anything. like if it was spelled J A S N. <clears throat> okay. Okay, cool. I hope the antidote still works with the new strain. Yeah, that's a very good point, Kim. I I would think so because they've been they created it using shells, but this is why you don't mess with that strain. kind of stuff. It's it scary. Mm-hmm. The doctor tested Thorn and he didn't have it. Yes. Thorn, but Thorn hasn't been around him this whole time. The others have. Seems a little sus that people, some people catch it straight away and not others. Yeah, and that, I mean, but that's true with viruses. You never, you know, I don't know. Cinder's mom's favorite. It's a good one. But Wolf has seen what they do to prisoners on Lunar. So I think he has, he's, he was half up being Scarlet, wasn't alive to be tortured. Yeah. Yeah. That's so sad. <laughs> Still so sad. Poor, poor Wolf. He really did get dirty, like Paige was saying. Like, if I was Scarlet, and I knew that Wolf had just, like, given up hope of, like, rescuing me in one piece, like, that would break my heart. Like, yeah. you try until you can't try anymore, man. I feel like Scarlet understands Wolf pretty darn well, though. You know? She oh, seems yeah. to get him. No, I agree. That's why they work. Yeah, because, yeah, um, he. you're right. It would be a little like, well, aren't you going to try? You know? <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I don't know. That, that's really tough. I, I think that would be kind of sad if you knew the person who loved you was just giving up hope that easily. Yeah. I think you're contagious until you show. Oh, so you don't actually get contagious until you show symptoms, kind of like. Um, what is it called? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I'm not going to think that hard about it. <laughs> That's a good possibility, Melanie. That's, um, that would close that loop. <laughs> that loop, little loophole. <laughs> we need to make sense of this. For okay, so when he mind. has the symptoms. Yeah, my brain is, is so used to asymptomatic symptoms. <laughs> okay, well, I'm sure that's probably true. But yeah, so I know you want to talk about Ferris, so let's just do it. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, so for everybody who was worried that they might have some like newfound sympathy for Lavana after reading this book, don't worry. She's just <laughs> she's just as awful as we thought she was. Like, oh no, I have sympathy. I have sympathy. You do? Of oh. course. <laughs> I don't think she's a good person, but uh, she yeah, had I'm crying. horrible, hor like she's been so horribly traumatized as a child that she never got therapy. And she has all these, she has magical abilities she shouldn't have. She has all the freedom in the world because she's royalty and nobody can say no to her. Like, and she's physically been like, she's never had therapy. She's never gotten help. She she has no self-esteem whatsoever. She's never learned how to have any empathy. Like, I don't feel bad for her. She's still horrible, but I can understand how she It's And I just, it's complicated. It's so complicated. <laughs> it is complicated, but at the end of the day, 
she still killed the man oh, yeah. that she supposedly loved so that she could further her lunar agenda. Oh, yeah. She does horrible, horrible things. Yeah. She, no, she's a terrible person. I just... She burnt her baby niece <sighs> to death. I mean, almost death. And, like, but I will say, Shinari, is that how everybody's saying it? How are we saying it? Oh, Channery. Channery, however you mm -hmm. want to. I was saying it, Shinari, the whole time in my head. She, she was worse. Yeah. Okay, so I don't sympathize for Lavana who she is now, but I do sympathize for child Lavana. That's who I have to sympathize for. And I think learning her story made me so sad for her as a child. But now she is who she is. She doesn't have a chance. Like, like, and Stacy says it right here. I'm gonna skip, I'll go back to the other ones, but um, Lavana didn't stand a chance given her circumstances. She doesn't, she doesn't stand a chance. There, there's no way she could be, and I know Shell's gonna disagree with me, but I'm gonna say, <laughs> given her circumstances, I hear what given, Shell has to say. given these very specific circumstances, she, she wouldn't have been anybody else. There is such a thing as as situational induced sociopathy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. I don't, Mom hates Lavana. She hate, yeah. Ferris made her really mad. Uh, yeah. The double ring like thing. Yeah. You were asking about that, weren't you? I was. I was. I was like, where did the where did the other ring come from? So yeah, I I like. I, I loved and what, what was even the words that I used? Like, basically, I loved and I hated it at the same time. Like, but it was just <laughs> done so well. Yeah, it was done. So I was captivated the entire time. Like, yeah, I wanted to know. It, I wanted to know all the awful. And, you know, it really was. It's like the most complex of all these books. And it was the most interesting look at a character. I mean, yeah, it was such a fascinating look at a character. I mean, I a, thought it was a backstory done really, you really know, well. I might have to change my rating for Ferris to five star. Honestly, I still think I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, well, and that that's um pretty um what am I trying to say? That's a big deal that you're still yeah. thinking about it. And I know that I have strong opinions, but my strong opinions are just silly. So don't, <laughs> if you don't agree with me. <laughs> like we're not, we're not here to agree. Like I love, I love that we all can see it in a different way, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted um, like to deep didn't get it. I thought the book went out of its way to say he was, she was just kind of born bad and had bad things happen to her. Sure, but was I, I didn't see that she was born bad. I didn't see that. I think she had horrible parents who never gave her the time of day. But we didn't we didn't hear too much about her experience before she got burned. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I sensed that Channery was was just awful to her even before that point. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah, Channery was a piece of work. She makes some of the choices she does. Yeah. Yeah. She And she thinks she has to make all these choices, which is just ridiculous. But she doesn't think she has any other chance, choice. You ever notice that? She continuously convinces herself that there is no other option. It's crazy. Yeah. Her, um, her train of thought is like, I can't. No. I know. The logic is just not there. <laughs> It's just not there. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not at all. Uh, thank you, Paige. <laughs> I'm a, a bit ridiculous. Just a bit ridiculous. Center and good. I was worried about Kim. Kim, I was worried about you. I knew you were going to, I thought you were going to hate Ferris. Um, I'm so glad you didn't hate it. Yeah. Yeah. And I am excited. I'm excited about like knowing her backstory, knowing a little bit more about Winter and knowing more about that, actually just that whole backstory on Luna, I'm excited about going into Winter because of it, you know, because I feel like now we know a lot more that we didn't know about Luna. I'm like, does anybody have any theories as to why Winter is not using her gift and has like 
I mean, I know some of you have started it, so maybe this is not a good question to ask, but I haven't started it. And I'm just like, why wouldn't she use her gift? Yeah. I mean, she's beautiful, so she doesn't have to use it as far as that. And maybe she's just so kind hearted that she doesn't feel like she wants to manipulate people. So. Yeah. True, Stacey. I think strong persons can overcome bad childhoods to be decent people. So she had a chance. Yeah, I hear where you're coming from, Shell. I just think that people have different personalities and some have stronger personalities than others. <laughs> but Shell and I already had this argument. So. Well, no, I, I lean toward agreeing with Shell. I mean, that's ideal. And yeah. there are many people have proven that you can go through really horrible childhoods and overcome and become decent people. But there are many examples of people who couldn't. Yeah. Only five star for you, Amber. Yeah, it's how funny, you know, because I looked at like Goodreads and stuff and it's one of the lower rated books, but I'm finding that a lot of us are loving Ferris so much, which is interesting. It was, yeah, it was way more than I expected. Like, I don't know what I expected, but it was highly satisfying. Yeah, it really was. I'm guessing Lawanda never developed past childhood with all the crazy. Yeah, she acts like a child, doesn't she? And so many of her choices now, she still like reverts back to having tantrums almost. It's. <clears throat> yeah, the the whole like, mirror banishment thing, mirror crushing thing. I was like, what's the point? Yeah. What's the point? Especially if you're going to wear your stinking, um, uh, her veil thing. But Yeah. Oh, and that's what mom was wondering is, um, is her current. So now who Lavana is, who we've met through the series, is she still look like solstice? I think so. I'm going to say yes. Yeah, because she she perfected that. She took Solstice and then she made Solstice even more desirable. And everybody says when they look at Lavana, it's like almost painful because she's so beautiful, you know. Mm -hmm. So, which I I thought that that development in the magic was really cool, actually. Oh. You know. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just thinking, you know how they were talking about how she could have like had surgeries done to like um, repair the damage that had been done whenever she got forced into the fire. It was mm -hmm. making me think like, oh my gosh, like, you know how much more like Cinder that would make her? <laughs> like if she oh, yeah. had like fake parts and stuff. <laughs> Actually, that's a really interesting. <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting point. <sighs> Lavana the cyborg. Huh. Yeah. Well, are cyborgs hated as much on, I guess they're not really, it wouldn't matter on Luna because you could just glam yourself. Yeah. Oh, wait, what'd you say? The fact that she was terrified of fire and chose to burn Cinder to death. Yeah, it was brutal. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Luna is screwed, no, Luna. Lavana is screwed up. <laughs> She's totally screwed up. Ugh. Yeah. You would think, I, I thought, I had that thought. Like, you would think of all of the things that she could have done to be rid of Celine, AKA Sender, like she knew how awful that was. Yeah. So yeah, just, and she, and, and didn't she even say like how she was thinking of like ways that she could do it, like the most mercifully or whatever. Would I, did I imagine yeah. that? Yeah. No, because, no, she did think about that. And she, why did burning her to death is not, that's not merciful. It's not quick. There was nothing. I mean, and let's be honest, part of her did it that way because Channery burned her, right? Like she's basically burning Channery in her mind, you know, it, like Cinder is Channery's child. Cinder is the only thing that Channery appeared to ever have loved. So yeah. like she's getting back at Channery by burning Cinder the way that Channery burned her. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, like, even if that wasn't specified. Even if it was subconscious, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah, totally. I could see that. They explain it in Winter why she doesn't use her magic, but there's no hints before that book. Okay, so we'll find out in in Winter. 
probably Winter saw what Lavana did with Glamour and her father, so she doesn't want to be like her. Does Winter ever, like, remember any of that? I remember, I know she... I mean, all we saw of Winter in Cress was, like, I mean, Menagerie, still pretty, Menagerie yeah. Winter and her pet wolf, and she was just talking, like, a flighty, crazy person, and she had those little apple, like, painkiller jobs, and... I mean, but I mean, like in in Ferris, how old was Winter when oh, when her was... father died? She... I can't remember. I mean, she was still still pretty young, I think. Yeah, I can't remember, but she was still. I mean, she had to have been like nine or ten or something like that. So, I mean, she'd remember that whole situation, wouldn't she? I, I would think regardless of how old she was, that would have been awful hard to forget. Well, and she only liked her father. She didn't like, she didn't like uh, Lavana. Yeah. But kids, kids are like super sensitive to, to that kind of stuff. Lavana yeah. had no love for that little girl and she knew yeah. it. And so did Cinder. I mean, they both knew it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that Lavana never, was never maternal and never tried to be. She was just jealous. She was just jealous of them. And they could tell, you know, they, she was creepy. She was a creepy lady. And she must have known something about her. Well, I, I kind of feel like Winter knows something about like how creepy Lavana or like that Lavana is up to nefar nefarious things. Cause Jace, not Jason, um, I'm getting people mixed up now. Because Everett kind of knew, you know, all those rumors started going around the castle when Cinder got burned. And and Everett kind of mentioned to her, like, well, are, are you? Sh why did you take Winter to the doctor that day? And yeah. so I wonder if Winter kind of picked up on some of that stuff, too. Mm -hmm. It's essentially intergenerational, intergenerational trauma, continuing trauma based on the systems in place. Yeah, because the parents were crazy as crazy too <laughs> there was there was a lot of craziness in that family it's a pretty bad place to be i think she still solstice because she kept saying she couldn't change it because it was her i know and isn't that the creepiest thing ever it's so so creepy me now. yeah and that she i mean oh the manipulations with everett is horrifying the the scenes where she's practically raping him is horrifying or she is, she really is. And I, then, I, told, I said, I was like so much for consent. Yeah, no. It, and then like continuously trying to convince him that, that he wants this. And you know, he's just, he, he never even gets time to heal from his wife dying. And then she forces his wife upon him. It, and you know, in her form all the time, like, and for years, for like 10, 15, how long they were together for a long time, like horrifying. I can see many indications of maturation stumping based off trauma. Yeah, she was a child in, in a lot of ways, like she never grew up at all. Um, not like a healthy child, <laughs> like, you know, she didn't, she, like the whole tantrums and stuff, she was issues. What? <laughs> I didn't. Well, I, I was actually worried about that the first time Lavana saw Cinder in the 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 castle, like the very first time she meet in the palace, the very first time she meets her. I figured that they would look similar and that so she would recognize her. You know, I imagine Cinder probably looks like Chanry a bit or looks yes. like their family. Well, and they they said that in the book that she had her kind of, you know, um same kind of like almost slanted eye not slanted but like you know just like slightly upturned eyes and like i think her hair is the same as her mom's and so yeah i mean there were definitely some physical similarities characteristics that looked the same you yeah. know what's interesting about that is that winter now i'm, I'm given fairest i'm a little concerned about uh, the Lunars actually getting behind Cinder because remember they were talking about when Cinder was young, nobody really liked her that much. They weren't that crazy about Cinder. They were all crazy about Winter. And so Winter was the one they all loved. They all wanted to marry off their kids to Winter. And Cinder was kind of eh, 
they weren't that excited about Cinder. And so I'm like, are we going to come up against this again? Um, not that I think that we're going to be, it's going to be a fight between Winter and Cinder. It's just, I wonder if it's going to be a little harder to get people behind Cinder because they weren't that enthralled with her when she was a child. Well, that's a good point. And the fact that they don't know that Cinder is nothing like her mother, like personality wise. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. So she can be as crazy as Channery like, is. Oh yeah. Like we want another Channery, you know, that's a very good point and they know yeah. and they and they also knew everett's character and yeah. they liked him and they already know winter because she's on the planet she's constantly there even if she's sort of in this strange background role at this point yeah. they still know that they like her and Paige says doubt Meyer wanted to go that deep yeah you're probably right <laughs> playing out her own trauma yeah i i uh she probably wasn't going that deep. That was just where my brain went during this book because I felt like it was so much more complex. This the character development was so much more complex with this one. Um, yeah, it's playing out her own trauma. She, she, I'm sorry, I'm a little behind on the messages, but playing out her whole trauma, whole trauma is so so fucked up. And for Lana to say she wouldn't be so cruel as to let her live through it, yes, yes, that was pretty rough. Like. The psychology behind it is interesting. Yeah, I think that's what got me, Paige. I, I was really interested in the psychology of it all. I, I think too too deeply about things sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> Winter did remember Celine, uh, so she would remember her dad at least a little. In Solstice, right? Um, yeah. Celine? talking about oh okay um let's see winter does remember her father and who's celine um that's cinder oh right okay thank you <laughs> i'm so used to calling her cinder um but i don't know if she was paying that much attention to what lavana was doing though oh yeah princess celine that's right okay yeah nobody wanted to pay attention to lavana it's also very interesting to find out how Lavana gained control since it was supposed to be her sister. However, her sister was never interested in the politics. Yeah, that was pretty clever of Lavana, wasn't it? To constantly be in the right place at the right time and um, take on the different roles that her sister wouldn't. She was sort of able to kind of weasel her way into there, into the politics of it all. And when I thought about her, her views of, of the politics of it, I was like, she's just like her parents. Like, even if, you know, she wants to see all these changes and stuff, they weren't changes that were going to be healthy for the planet. They were for Luna, especially knowing how Luna was in trouble already. Like she's just putting the planet into more danger, but all she wants is more and more and more. Now she wants earth. And she goes into that whole, like, I thought I she want was earth. so stupid for not, yeah not listening to the advisors about how they needed to pace themselves because the resources were going to run out and like, you know, all these people that she's overworking, like in the outer sectors, like she just thinks she's going to cruise on through there and brainwash, brainwash them in all into like, Oh, Hey, I want to do this. I want to drive myself mm -hmm. into the ground. Oh, Hey, like, yeah, she, she was, she was smart about some things, but then other things she was not. It, it was kind of like because she tasted like the power of it all. You know, she's like, oh, well, I want more, more, more. And then all of a sudden she wants this and she there wants that. Even, she wants everything. There was even a line that in the book where she said that she wanted everything. Yeah. And like that right there, she just signed her own fate because that is yeah. not that's not going to work. She, <laughs> she's, she's never, she's never going to be happy. Like and you do some crazy stuff. If you think you need everything. Yeah. That's when you get in trouble. That's when, and that's, this is, you know, we're reading a fantasy sci-fi fantasy sci-fi story. Like, obviously <laughs> she's not going to win. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, I think or I think did we mention it in the last video? We're thinking they could be co co queens, <laughs> Cinder and Winter. But yeah, because Cinder doesn't really want it. 
Well, if I'm just well, Winter support. would have to get her oh, magic my. under control or something if she was going to lead because the current state of her her current mental state is not not yeah no she's losing it because she's not using her magic so mm-hmm. yeah Lafana's justifications for what she did was crazy because it was just so wrong but she refused to see it or couldn't yeah either or she it was like she could see it for a second and then she convinced herself right away that that wasn't a good idea then all of a sudden she couldn't see it anymore like you know she she didn't she didn't want to it was the same with Everett. Every time that she was like, "Well, I can. He, he can. He can leave. If he doesn't love me, he can leave." But she would never have let him left, leave. We all yeah. knew that. She wasn't gonna, and he knew that too. And that's why he agreed to marry her, because she actually physically controlled him. How horrifying is that? I keep thinking about how they used fear and hate, a shell killing their parents to collect the shells for the antidote. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of lot of manipulation happening there. Yeah. It, and then Sybil Mira is p- pretty screwed up too because she's like all in for all this stuff. She's like, you want to do all this crazy ass stuff? You're killing all these people of honor. Bring it on. Bring yeah. it on. Let's do None it. None of that, like they, um, Meyer even mentioned like that after, um, was it after uh, Channery or not Channery, Lavana? burned Celine like she didn't even act like phased or surprised about it like right yeah she's pretty hardcore which we we yes. kind of knew but but she but has hey, no she's idea. dead now she Do is yeah oh that was fantastic that I was, was very happy scene. about that I, I yeah. think we we sh- if we backtrack we should talk about that rooftop scene because that was we do that was some good we stuff. need to we're almost through all the comments. Let's see. It was action, and I actually enjoyed it. Uh, oh Kim says God. she has zero empathy. She does. Zero. And then Amber says, yeah, Cinder wants to marry Kai. That's right. She does. And so I think Winter will be in, Winter will be in charge of Luna, and, Ka- and Cinder will be married to Kai. I like it. <laughs> and they'll, they'll co-queen. And so, you know. Cinder will be on Earth, be the Earth representative, but yeah, they'll have I mean, a good relationship still, at that point. Yeah, they could still um, unite Earth yeah. and, <laughs> and the moon. Okay, so that scene was incredible. That was an amazing action scene. I absolutely agree. It was really good. It was, it was crazy. And, like, when Cinder, like, tapped into all her power... And yeah, and really gave Sybil, made Sybil go crazy, lose her mind, and jump off the roof. Gave yeah. her peace. I know, and that was they came, they came so close to escaping. Like I really thought they were just going to be able to get out of there for a second, or at least I was hoping they were. But I also knew that Sybil was kind of on to them. So, so did Jason just give them all up because? he didn't he didn't really believe in cinder i mean i know he didn't know at that point that she was princess Celine, but did he just not believe in her so he's like ah i'll save my ass give them up what well, was the deal with jason my first thought is his loyalty is to winter he wants to get back to where she is and maybe he thought that was his best bet but i don't even think about that I like he I don't know. I was pretty pissed off at him at that point. It was cool how we got to see little little Jason come into into play yeah. in Paris. But yeah, I, I did enjoy that because I wasn't sure what kind of relationship he had with Winter. You know, because all we've seen from him in Cress is this snarky personality where you're just like uh, he he just seems so prickly that you can't yeah. even imagine him with someone. But um, as a child, we see that they got it really close to each other. Mm-hmm. I like yeah, that. whenever she was talking about that story that her dad was reading to her, and she was like, well, you know, why can't the princess get rescued by a doctor? You know, Jason wants to be a doctor. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. yeah, it was really cute. 
We'll see in winter. Okay. 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 He but also Jason. It. Yeah. See, it was still a dick move. Even if it, even if it ends up being okay in the, in the long run, it was kind of like Thorn. At least what I thought of Thorn at first when he was, when he had that Android in his lap. <laughs> I, I don't know if that Amber, I don't know if that was the case. If Sybil mind controlled Jason, I, I, it didn't seem like it because he was, he, she could have, she could have. It just seemed like, didn't, didn't Sybil say that he called her? Like he actually contacted her to tell her where the ship was. I think I do remember that now, but I didn't know. I didn't know if I believed her either. I know. And that's probably part of the problem is we don't really know for sure. And like, we'll see in winter. So Again, you'll see. You'll see. What's speculating. <laughs> that bit with Cinder torching her was intense. Yeah, it was pretty intense. I was almost like, ooh, this is... I, I was worried for Cinder almost because I'm like, don't get too into this because this is Levana territory. <laughs> Did Jason give them up? I can't remember now. Wasn't he a prisoner? Have I imagined that? Yes. But she didn't. There was a calm, calm prior. Yeah, so he did. I think Meyer is excellent at keeping characters murky. Yeah, so there was a calm. Like he did calm Sybil to tell him where the where they were taking off from. But I agree that Meyer does that intentionally. It took me a while to trust Thor. <laughs> Or wolf, no, I could wolf? literally. I can't like, remember. <laughs> I think I could smell like Sybil's like brain frying whenever Cinder was. Oh yeah, it was rough. Like that scene was was vicious. It was fantastic. Was, like and it was like a crazy person, and like oh look look at the pretty birds. I don't know what she said. But... <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible to see like Cinder come into herself too. Like, you know, like I said, I don't want her, oh. I don't want to see her go Levana, but I also, it was nice to see her like, just do what she needed to do in that moment to save the day. And I think that it was not, I mean, yeah, we don't want her to turn into Levana, but I also think that because she was able to show her power in that way, I mean, she controlled a thaumaturge or however you say it, like yeah that's right i think that's that happening. is that's a big deal like there was there was like speculation about how powerful cinder was but like that there's proof there's proof in the pudding now so i think and i think that like isn't lavana the only one who can do that much like manipulation with thaumaturgs and stuff like that i think it's just lavana that wouldn't make sense but or no, the thaumaturge can do that to the soldiers. Oh, but that doesn't mean that they can do it to other thaumaturges. It's just, I don't know. I can maybe remembers now. I loved Cinder getting Kai out of the building. Yes. <laughs> she had to shoot him with the dart. <laughs> you shot me. It was so great. That whole scene, that whole scene was, that whole scene was great. He's like, since yes, when, when do you shoot darts out of your hand? Like, when, when did that happen? <laughs> I love that Meyer explores the good and bad in characters. Yeah, she does. And she does play around with that quite a bit. She especially played around with that in Ferris. But she does with all of the characters because, you know, you get the questionable things that Wolf did and Scarlet. You get the questionable things that Thorne does. You get the questionable things that all these characters are doing. So it's not so straightforward. Royal bloodline, yeah. So it must be that Lavana and that's like a something special that the royal bloodline can do. Yeah. Right. I listened to Scarlet on audiobook. That's the only one I listened to on audiobook. And I don't remember how they said Thaumatur. I'm so bad about audiobooks, you guys. I <laughs> I don't do a whole lot of audio audiobooks. I went through a phase last winter where where I was reading some audiobooks, but it was like I was doing it like while I crochet, you know, mm -hmm. that works for me, but. Yeah, I I've haven't felt like listening to audiobooks lately. Just haven't been in the mood, so I'm not doing very well with the audiobooks I should be listening to at the moment. Um, 
like Emma. I started Emma and I'm like, no, you did? Yeah, and I read like three chapters I listened to and it was great, but I'm just not in the mood for audiobooks at the moment. So I'm taking a little bit of a break at the end. I'll get back to it soon. Sab? S-A-B? What's, um, I'm not good with, <laughs> with, uh, if that's, uh, what do you call IDK. it? I <laughs> I don't do audiobooks either. Yeah. Um, I do like audiobooks. I'm just going through a, a short phase. Oh, they saved her reading in October. There's been times when audiobooks are, you know, what it takes. Yeah, I could see I could see where it could potentially get you out of a slump. Yeah. And in fact, I a good example of when audiobook worked really well for me was when I was trying to get through Jane Eyre last year. And I was, it was one where I was having to like read the book, like have the book physically in front of me while I listened to the audiobook because it just, it kept me going. Where if I was just reading it and like left to my own devices, I would, I would feel like maybe I didn't absorb something. And so then I would go back and it was like I wasn't getting anywhere. And the audiobook kind of forced me to keep moving forward. Yeah. That makes sense. No, that does make sense. And I've I've had that same issue recently with schoolwork. So I'm like, if I have to read articles for school, I just do like a text and speech. That's <laughs> smart. Because I'm like, I can't get through these articles. I'm just so. Some of them are just really dry, and so I'm like, well, I'll have to let it talk to me, and I can go along with it, and it keeps me from yeah. getting distracted, spacing out and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So Paige is just really enjoying. It. Yeah, you know, and that I, I did enjoy the audiobook when I listened to it. It was really good. So I'm, yeah, if I ever do, that's, that's a good idea. If I ever do like a, a re reread, I might, might do the, audiobooks. the audiobooks. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Kim listens to audiobooks. Yeah. When doing mindless tasks, that's, I do like, I like doing it when I'm doing mindless tasks too. Anything that won't take my attention away. How have they not made a movie out of this series? I'm I'm kind of surprised they haven't, to be honest, because it's been out for a while. Series. I it's not a it. brand new series. No adaptations whatsoever, huh? Not that I know. Let's see. What was it? 2014 is Cress. Yep. Let's see. It's up on my shelf. It depends on the genre for me. I, I do enjoy audiobooks for fantasy books. I've listened to all the books so far. Oh, you listened to all these? Yeah, I mean, I think that they did a really good job. And and especially, it can be tricky because it sometimes it depends on the audiobook for me if I like a book more or less. Not always, but I've definitely listened to some horrible audiobooks. And then I'm like, did I really hate that book so much or was it the audiobook I hated? <laughs> it can be tricky. Sometimes the narration can ruin it. But like... Um, I was reading um, Inkheart, mm -hmm. and I was having a really hard, that's another one that I was having a really hard time getting through the physical book, and I wasn't even, like, enjoying the story whatsoever, and then I listened to the narration, and it it did help me, like, care about the story some more, so yeah. I got to mute myself for a second. Okay. Uh, let's see. Amy agrees with Paige. Audiobooks. The audiobooks are really well done. I really liked the characterization in that. That I think it's just the one person. She's doing a really good job with her voices, and she changes accents quite a bit. So I thought that was a lot of fun. My um, son is home. Oh yay! <laughs> yes, a movie. Yes, a movie would be really cool, or a series that they. You know, I I am kind of surprised that they haven't decided to do anything with this series. They've done they've done movies and series out of books that I've never heard of before. But they could totally put a Netflix one. thing. I mean, anything like yeah, and it'd be fun. It'd be a lot of fun. The Australian accent they attempted. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's so bad. <laughs> yeah, I would be like that's sometimes awful. audiobooks. I love audiobooks, but when I'm in the mood, but I, but like sometimes if the narrator is just not your taste or they do, you know, terrible <laughs> accents, then it's, it can be distracting. 
I've never like I I don't like romances when it's a female character narrating both roles. Like I just to me it's like, oh. it takes, I'm like oh this isn't attractive for me. <laughs> just uh, certain books I think lend better to audiobooks than others. So, but um yeah, let's see. You would pause the audio, read the sentence, then play and skip over. <laughs> skip over the Australian accents. <laughs> that, that is so that, funny. I mean, it was pretty, bad. That, that, that was bad. Yeah, why couldn't they just get an Australian actor or, you know, to, to read it then? <laughs> <sighs> this was fun. This was fun. Any other thoughts or feelings about Cress or Ferris? Anything we forgot to mention? We did a really good job covering them both, I think. Yeah, there were, there were some, like I said, there were some amazing scenes in here. Dr. Erland, that one really was rough. That was a really rough run. I cried because I was just I was not ready for that. And then I just felt like it was so hard that he didn't get the kind of closure that he wanted. You know, he didn't get that closure with Cress. And Cress felt bad, too, because she couldn't say she loved him because she really wasn't, you know, didn't she know never knew him. Yeah. And she she spent her whole life thinking her parents tried to kill her and that Sybil Mira saved her. Right. So, like, you know, it would be really hard. It would be really hard. The movie rights were sold in 2014. So that means something is going to happen. Right? They need to get with it. <laughs> oh, 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 Paige. <laughs> That's what Shell was telling me. She was really depressed about reading the last one, Winter, because she was so sad about it being over. And I could see that. We've gotten to know these people, and I feel like we've just barely got to spend time with them, and it's going to be over soon. At least we still have Stars Above. Does anybody know what Stars Above is supposed to be about? It's a whole bunch of short stories. Oh, it's I just know. short stories? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, there is one about Ico in there, which I'm excited about. Yay! And we have uh, our perspective um, next read along to look forward to too. So even though this one is ending, we have one that we're gonna. And Paige was asking about that, so we got to talk about that, Danielle, and make up yeah. some some ideas and we to, talk. We need to have a conversation kind of about that. plan happening here. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, because everybody wants to know what's happening next. I want to know what's happening next. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I'm so excited. Uh, I hate when they buy and sit on it so no one else can use a story. Oh, and that's yeah, not going to happen, is it? That better not. 2014. Like, what are they doing? They came, in, they came and blame COVID. Like, they had so yeah. much time to get stuff done before then. Yeah, it's time. Two they better do something. Written after the end of winter are really amazing as well. I would I would enjoy that too. Yeah, I would like to read those too. Yeah, I didn't know. I did I did know somebody had mentioned that there was graphic novels, but I completely forgot about that. So, stars above is fun. Oh, good, good. I'm excited about that. That'll be a, that'll be a perfect December one. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And then I'm yeah. And it's nice that I split up the Discord into the stories, so we can talk about the individual oh, stories on there. That's good. Um, I'm reading myself. My I'm readying myself for the massive reading hangover, which will come yeah. when you finish. Oh, this is really I sad, know. actually. I know. <laughs> Making my heart. Uh, there are a couple of graphic novels about Ico called Wires and Nerves. Oh, yeah, good. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Good. Although that sounds awesome because I love Ico. Haven't had enough of her. Oh. Massive being. <laughs> <laughs> we, we like new words. <laughs> <laughs> Massive thing reading hangover. I like it. Yeah, so <sighs> very, very exciting stuff. And I think everybody, I would like to thank everybody for participating so well, you know, with our Discord, coming into our yeah, reading spread out tonight was great. Yeah. Was awesome. It's been it's been so great having such an amazing group, you know, together reading all these books. Like I've just yeah. been loving it. Yeah. I love that we're all invested. <laughs> like, ready, ready. It's so exciting. <laughs> what if we all hate the next series? <laughs> oh my gosh. It could happen. It could happen. 
<laughs> yeah. But it is fun having books that are a bit like polarizing too, because then you get good discussions that we can have. Yeah. So, and so for that, um, I think I'm I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the next read along. Amy and I talked about narrowing it down to a few um, series and then listing that in the Discord. So um, for like voting purposes, so if you want to vote, but for some reason you're not in the Discord, then please get a hold of me or Amy some other way. Yeah. Um, Cause of course we want to count your vote. Yep. But. Yeah, we both have Instagrams, So you can always send, send us a, a direct message on Instagrams and um, also, I guess, I don't know my Instagram handle right now, but <laughs> it's, I, I'll put that, I'll put that information in the description box below. I was say, this. I can look on my phone real quick. Cause I think mine's in the, in the description, but I, did I even make a description for this? I don't know. <laughs> it's a star underscore reads is Amy's. And then okay. just Bokara, B-O-O-K-C-H-A-R-A. Perfect. <clears throat> Wires and nerves. Okay, yeah. So I want to read all these. Thank you so much, Stacy. Yeah, and thank you too, Kim. Thank you, thank you. This has been great. Com yes, we can do community posts. Oh yeah, we can even do like um That's because fine. now you can do um nope. I don't know. It, I mean like uh <laughs> Are we talking about in the Discord or a poll? A poll in the community bus. Yeah. No, on on um, YouTube. Oh, oh yeah, I see those sometimes when I'm scrolling through my like subscription feed. Yeah, I guess, something. So that's another possibility too, and we can also put polls up on Instagram for people who are following us. But are not I just on don't want to like or... accidentally, you know, double count a vote. So I guess that's if you voted point. one place, don't vote on vote other, other places. places. Yeah, no, that's a very good point because then there'll be multiple votes that are, or like you said, double votes. Thanks for being here, Thank Amy. You, Amy. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for the evening. And this has been a wonderful time. We will come to you. We still have to talk about when our next sprints and our live show are going to be for winter, but we'll get that all settled you know, we'll get that all figured out and then we'll post all that information in the discord as well as Daniel will be putting up, um, cause the next set will be the reading sprints and the discussion will be on Danielle's channel for winter. So yes. she'll be posting those live show and reading sprint stuff. You see what Paige said? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'll be keeping an eye out for your uh, vote page. <laughs> <laughs> your one vote. <laughs> okay. So I think that's it. Well, good night, Yay. everyone. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. <laughs>